Let's learn how to make our quilt sandwich. First start with your backing fabric. Place it right side facing your table. Then get some tape. Scotch tape or masking tape works fine. You want to secure your backing fabric to the table starting in the corners. If you have a quilt that is larger than your tabletop, you may need to do this on the floor. The tape is a temporary hold to kind of keep the backing from slipping when we're pinning it together. As you can see now I'm working on the sides and I'm placing the tape randomly. It's not really an exact science, you just want to make sure that your top doesn't move. Now I'm going to lay my batting. And as you can see, this piece of batting has a little wrinkle down in the corner there that I'm going to try to straighten out. If you're using polyester batting, it's a good idea to pull it out of the packaging ahead of time and maybe a day or two and let it breathe. Some of those wrinkles will fall out naturally. Now I'm placing my quilt top in the center. As you can see, I have about two inches all the way around my quilt top for my backing and batting. On a quilt this size, it's probably an overkill, but on a larger quilt, this is really important. I grabbed my quilter's pins now, which have a bit of a curve to them. The curve helps the pin go through all three layers easily. I'm going to show you a pin basting method, which I prefer because it's quick and it's easy and it is secure. I'm going to show you how I do my grid. Again, the pin basting method that I'm using here is what I use for all my quilts. On a quilt this size, it's probably overkill when you see how many pins I'm actually going to pin it, put into this quilt, but I wanted you to see the spacing that I recommend, and it's especially important on larger quilts. You don't want any shifting when you start that quilting process, especially when you're using a large quilt, and if you're feeding it under your machine, you're bunching it, rolling it, twisting it, pulling it, you definitely don't want anything to separate. Now we have it finished and I'm going to grab my crochet hook now, which is my favorite tool for closing pins. Of course it takes me a moment to get that first one in. Once I get a grip on it, you'll find that the crochet hook will speed up closing the pins as well as save your fingertips. Again, on a large quilt this is especially important. There could be a hundred pins in a queen size quilt and you'll have some very sore fingertips if you don't do this. Again, I'm showing you how I pin baste any size quilt. And we're just about finished here. That extra batting and backing that I was explaining earlier on here is to help with your quilting. When you do dense quilting on a large quilt, your backing and batting will shrink up a bit. And you don't want that to, to run out of fabric by the time you finish quilting. I'm just removing it from my table now. I'm pulling off my tape and I'll be ready to run it through my machine. Thank you for watching.